Accompany me as we heed the words of the prophet Jeremiah and the apostle John. Join me as we investigate the sacred pages of the ancient prophetic text we call the Old Testament in search of Messiah. Hello, my name is C.J. Levick, and in the next 15 minutes, I would like to present a prologue to what I believe is the most exhaustive biblical investigation of the oldest prophetic perspective in the world. Some of what I will be presenting is contained in other videos that I produce, but some of it has never been disclosed. And this is the first time I've begun a video series that will present both a 20,000-foot view of the most important calendar in the world and also dig deep into all the details. In the end, all these Countdowns to Eternity videos will add up to three to four hours put together in one-hour segments. So this is going to be an exhaustive deep dive into the years of prayer and Bible research upon which the entire series rests. It has been called by many names, but the simplest title is also the most descriptive, as it is the 7,000-year sabbatical calendar that is prophetically portrayed in the seven-day repeating cycle God instituted for mankind on the first week of creation. This is coupled with the information that God's calendar was organized on the same principle, except that God's daily cycle is not repeated every sunset to sunset with each new 24-hour cycle beginning and ending, but rather a 1,000-year cycle that would end after the 7,000th year reign of Yeshua the Messiah on the earth. The veracity of this perspective is easily provable from Scripture, but who imagined that the dispensational 7,000-year framework would be disclosed in the pictures and number language of the very first word in the Bible? Who would imagine that disclosure would also include the first Proto-Evangelium? A disclosure so eloquently simple that the chances that it is coincidental an artifact of an ancient language based on random, non-prophetic pictures and numbers is not only statistically impossible, but also laughable, as God himself has directed us to this very spot in Scripture, with the promise that the end would be revealed in the beginning. The fact that the Lord directed our attention to this very verse as evidence that he alone can forecast the future in the beginning sets him apart from all other false gods. Listen to what it says in Isaiah 46, 9 through 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. What better beginning to investigate than the prophetic laden word that is literally found in the beginning? So I invite you to come along on a journey that began for me soon after my 60th birthday in the year 2006. It was in that year I began to feel a gentle prompting by the Holy Spirit to do something that honestly had never before entered my mind. The gentle prompting was not complicated, just two words that I could not shake from my mind. The two words were, learn Hebrew. During the following two years, I cannot tell you how frustrated and frankly confused I was as every effort to learn phonetic Hebrew was an epic failure. In utter frustration, I sought the Lord and asked him if I had misread or misunderstood the constant prompting that consumed my thoughts. Why not Greek? Now that's something I could do. I had taken years of Greek in college and could read it with little effort in my college days. But I must confess that like anything else that's left unattended, 60 years later, it might have taken me six months or longer to brush up on it. But I was confident I could handle Greek. But Hebrew was a total muddled mystery to me. It was just not happening. I even prayed for the gift of tongues appealing to a supernatural solution to my problem, but that did not happen either. Finally, I came to the conclusion that I had imagined this prompting, and perhaps the Holy Spirit was not the source of this siren song that kept looping in my mind. And then it happened. It was the year 2008, on my 62nd birthday, that it happened. After all the candles were extinguished and the smoke cleared away, 
I began opening the presents that had been so kindly provided. As everything was about to come to a conclusion, my wife handed me one last final gift. It was obviously a book, but not just any book. It was the book sent by the Lord as an answer to all those prayers I had sent heavenward for help. The book was titled Hebrew Word Pictures, authored by Dr. Frank Seekins. I immediately opened the book, and just as quickly, in a flash of revelation, I understood exactly what the Lord wanted me to do as I turned to page 10 and 11 of Dr. Seekins' book. It was there I saw for the first time the modern and ancient Hebrew pictographs that God had preserved for all eternity. Now, at this point, I did something you might consider strange. I shut the book and did not open it again for many months. Why? you might ask, did I do that? The answer is simple. I figured if the Lord was prompting me to investigate the ancient pictographic language of the Garden of Eden, the language we call Hebrew today, that I needed to do my own research and not be influenced by anyone else, even someone as brilliant as Dr. Seekins, but rely on the Holy Spirit alone to guide me on the path that I had spent two years yearning for so diligently. Now, at this point, I should probably share that I had spent over 20 years as a technical analyst. I studied long-term trends and cycles and developed trading and stock timing systems, including working with a remarkable man who at the time was known as the father of technical analysis. In other words, I was a number nerd. I thought in numbers, dreamed in numbers, and had an intense curiosity about how numerical cycles played a part in human history. For two decades, I did research in order to discover things that were hidden from the casual observer. And yes, I was very successful at this quirky, numerical-based vocation. So when I discovered that the 22 Hebrew pictographs were also numbers, I was over the moon. I mean, I was all in. The first thing I did was make a list of critical questions designed to determine if what I was looking at could be authenticated. This consumed the better part of several months as I investigated the historical record to make sure this was real. Did Dr. Seekins get it right? The answer is that he had produced a faithful representation of both the modern and ancient proto-Canaanite Hebrew pictographs that were the foundation of the Hebrew language. If you have not purchased Dr. Seekins' book, I would encourage you to do so. And again, discovering the proof that the first language revealed on the earth contained the decimal system that is the foundation of all math, even to this day, as the 22 letters started out with 1 to 9, then 10 to 90, and finally 100 to 400, was immediate notification to me that something amazing was waiting for me just around the corner. This revelation was mind-blowing as I realized that God introduced the mathematical concept of multiplication in the very beginning with 10, and 10 was exactly paired with the picture of God doing a mighty work with his hand and the sacred concept connected with the number 10 that was directly connected with God in heaven ordaining events to happen at the appointed time on the earth. I had discovered God's multiplier, the key to timing the 7,000-year prophetic sabbatical calendar. Starting in 2008, for the following seven years, I spent all my spare time investigating the scriptures using the pictures and numbers in order to see if I could discover a language that was currently hidden from our eyes and understanding. I was no longer working, and so I had lots of time. Time not spent golfing or boating, but rather gloriously employed in the investigation of God's word, a decision I will never regret or forget. The answer to the reality and veracity of this divine messaging system came immediately as each Hebrew word I investigated yield a magnified and amplified message that was focused on one thing alone. That one thing was God's plan to rescue and redeem mankind based on the sacrificial atonement of his son, who had been sent into the world to accomplish his father's will. This was the one and only lens that produced revelation. All the other methods produced nonsense. I started this project as a biblical literalist, but after a couple of years of investigating God's Word based on the pictographs and self-authenticating numerical language that derives its meaning from the pages of scriptures alone, I became a raging, unapologetic biblical literalist. My investigation and the copious notes and documentation was well organized, but it soon became so voluminous and so compelling 
that by the year 2015 I knew it was time to go public with what I had learned as I was certain this calling and the revelation I had been given was not just for me but to be published and shared in order to glorify God, God the Father, Son, and magnify the work of the Holy Spirit and to encourage God's people. And so this became and is to this very day at the end of 2023 the single passion of my remaining life. I began publishing my findings around 2015, and it wasn't long before I was contacted by a Jewish rabbi that did not share my enthusiasm for what I was doing. In fact, he did his very best to convince me that I was on a fool's errand, as I might find a few words that yielded something interesting, but using this method of investigating the Hebrew script was like a blind squirrel finding nuts. It would work for a while, but soon I would starve. I would fail. He was convinced that it was all hogwash and the product of a foolish, overexcitable, and fevered mind. He is not the only one that shared that opinion with me, as what I am proposing has been met with some mocking and skepticism from some of the biblical scholars and some of the Bible prophecy teachers. Most of the condemnation has come without any investigation or real interest in trying to understand the language of the Garden of Eden, as it was easier to paint my work with the tainted broad brush of Kabbalism or pagan numerical nonsense or some other heretical teaching that has nothing even remotely to do with the simple, provable fact that I was bringing God's word in the Hebrew in light in the original language of the Garden of Eden. Well, the rabbi challenged me to apply my pictographing and numeric messaging system to the first verse in the book of Genesis. He said after that I'd quit. I took the challenge and reported the results in the first book I published titled Volume 1, The Living Word in 3D. To be perfectly frank, I was not bothered by the criticism of the Jewish rabbi who needs prayer as he is blinded spiritually because of his unbelief and sadly cannot even recognize his own Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is described prophetically in the Holy Scripture so convincingly and with such clarity that only rabid hatred and the result of unbelief and blindness can explain the condition that he and others find themselves in. In fact, it was the rabbi's challenge that led me to the most amazing discovery of my life, which I published about seven years ago, titled The Bereshit Passover Prophecy. And this is where the journey began. My basic understanding of the numerical prophecy contained in the Hebrew word Bereshit was not changed one bit since I published this book almost seven years ago. What has changed is my understanding of the application of the prophecy based on further biblical exploration and not to mention some failures based on calendar data that is corrupt and my own failure to correctly calculate the actual duration of time when measuring dates between B.C. and A.D. The Bereshit Passover prophecy announced that the 70th week of Daniel would begin in 2023. I no longer believe that. I think it's a year off. I now understand that this is not correct, and the year we're looking for is 2024. And the key to this failure was the failure to introduce the key seven-year sabbatical cycles into the calculation, and I'll explain this in detail in future videos. I have announced the end in the beginning in this video. In other words, if you're interested in my projected date for the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel, I'm on the record here and in other places that it will happen in the fall of 2024, probably on or just before the Day of Atonement. But if you're interested in taking the journey with me that will connect all the dots and hopefully authenticate this perspective based on the Bible alone, then you will be happy to know that my goal and the goal of my graphic artist, Sergio Leon, to produce and present at least one new video a week, exploring all the over 50 dots that must be connected in order to present an error-free forecast without any reservations on my part. I will leave you with a chart that demonstrates just some of the complexity that makes up a perfectly synchronized 7,000-year calendar that asks dozens of questions I was not asking seven years ago but now realize must be answered in order to arrive at the correct calendar date. I think you will find this journey will build your faith and increase your understanding of the Bible in ways that will nourish your soul and have you on the edge of your seat waiting for the soon return of our Lord. Keep looking up. 
Let's continue to encourage one another until the Lord comes to take us home. It's not going to be long. Maranatha. <laughs>